brief exercise 18-15 deals with the issue of cost recovery uh, method of recognizing gross profit. Uh, if you remember from our discussion in class, we said that revenue recognition can occur at the point of sale, most common point, can occur uh, during production, but before delivery, there we're talking about percentage of completion or completed contract method, typically in the context of long-term construction contracts. And then recognition can occur after delivery, and the two methods there are the installment sales method and the cost recovery method. The installment sales method recognizes profit in proportion to cash collections. Every time you collect a little bit of cash, you recognize a little bit of profit. The cost recovery method delays recognizing any profit until the amount of cash that you have collected exceeds the cost of the item that you sold. Both of these methods are used whenever there is a high degree of uncertainty concerning the ultimate amount that you're going to collect from the customer, where the cost recovery method is typically used when there's much higher degree of uncertainty, when there's significant uncertainty but not as much as under the cost recovery method, then the installment sales method is used. So the cost recovery method, very conservative. Installment sales method is conservative, but less conservative than the cost recovery method. So let's take a look at 18-15. So we've got a company. They sold equipment. The seller is the Shoes, Shoes Corporation. They sold the equipment for $20,000. The equipment is on Shoes' books at $13,000. Uh, Schuess collected $10,000 of cash in 2014, 5000 in 2015, and the remaining uh, amount due, $5,000, was collected in 2016. So those are the basic facts of the problem. So <coughs> I've scheduled out here four columns, a column showing the year, the amount of cash collected in that year, a column for the cumulative cash collections, and then a column where I, I have some notes. And those notes relate to the, the question of whether or not cumulative cash collections exceed the cost of the asset. So let's take a look at 2014. So we collected $10,000 of cash. Since that's the first year, that's the year in which the sale occurred, that 10000 also is the cumulative amount of cash that we've collected from the customer. This column asks whether or not the cumulative cash collections exceed the cost of the asset. And the answer is no, because the cumulative cash collections of 10000 are less than the cost of the asset of 13000 So under the cost recovery method, there would be no profit recognized on this sale in 2014. In 2015, the cumulative cash collections 10,000 last year plus another 5,000 this year, 15,000 is the cumulative cash collections. And the question asked in this column is whether the cumulative cash collections exceed the cost of the asset. Well, the answer is yes. 15,000 cumulative cash collections exceed the $13,000 cost of the asset. So then 2,000 out of the 5000 that we collected in cash this year represents cash collections in excess of the cost of the asset. The first $3,000 that we collected this year, that we collected in 2015, is simply deemed to be a recovery of the cost of our asset, as were the, all the cash collections in 2014. So in 2015, we recognize $2,000 out of the $5,000 as profit on the income statement. In, then in 2016, all of the $5,000 that we recognize is recognized as, as profit because all $5,000 is deemed to be cash collected in excess of the cost of the asset. So the first $13,000 of cash that we collect on this receivable is deemed to be a recovery of the cost of the asset and dollars 15,001 through 20,000 that we collect are deemed to be profit. Okay, so 
that's sort of the thinking through this. Let's just go through the, the accounting for it as well. So here's the entry that the company would have made to book this sale under the cost recovery method. On the day they enter into the sale, debit accounts receivable for 20000 That's what's due us. Credit equipment for the cost of the equipment that we sold. And then credit deferred gross profit account, a liability account, for $7,000. That's the entry made at the time the sale occurs. And the collections on the receivables, here are the entries that we make to record the cash collected on the receivables over 2014, 15, and 16. Same old entry you've seen all your accounting life, debit cash, credit accounts receivable for the amount of cash that we got. The last entry that you see down, series of entries that you see down here are the entries that we make to recognize profit on cash collections in excess of our cost. As we said before, the 10000 that we collected in 2014, none of that cash was a cash collection in excess of the cost of the assets. So there's no entry prepared in 2014. I've denoted it simply by zeros here. In 2015, 2000 of the 5000 that we collected in 2015 is deemed to be cash collected in excess of cost. So we're going to transfer that uh, 2000 out of the deferred gross profit account. Transfer, that's the account where we originally deferred the, the profit on the sale. Transfer 2000 of that 7000 over to the income statement by means of this journal entry. So debit the deferred gross profit liability account credit realized gross profit, which is an income statement account reported over on the income statement. So by making that entry in 2015, we're going to recognize $2,000 of profit over on the income statement. And then in 2016, we make the same entry again, debit deferred gross profit, credit realized gross profit. And here, we're going to recognize all 5000 of the cash that we collected in 2016 as uh, realized gross profit because all five thousand dollars that we collected in 2016 are ca represent cash collections in excess of the cost of the asset so that's the accounting for under the cost recovery method uh, both cost recovery and installment sales method are used when there's uncertainty concerning collectability uh, if it's very severe uncertainty we use the cost recovery method. If the uncertainty is less severe, we use the installment sales method.